My name is uh, Chris Starling, and uh, I am the uh, Vice President and Chief Development Officer for the Marines Memorial Association, and I would like to welcome you here today. You are in the Living Memorial, as we call it, and our mission here is to honor the legacy of military service, and we do that with a living memorial and through programs that commemorate and educate and serve veterans of all eras. Staff Sergeant Hamilton, post the colors. Arms. Each in your own persuasion. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity you've given us to be here today in this great assemblage to all these fine Korean War veterans, for those folks who cannot be here and will not ever be here. We ask you to put your loving arms around their families, their friends, and their associates. We ask you to put your loving arms around this gathering today that we may have a wonderful celebration of this anniversary. We ask you to put your arms around all of our military and their families, wherever they may be in harm's way or otherwise. We ask your blessing upon this food we're about to receive to nourish our bodies so we can continue your great work here on earth for a people that went to a foreign country, to a place where no one knew them and where they knew no one. We ask you to guide us and keep us safe, keep us prosperous, that we may go on continuing your work here on earth. These things we ask in your holy name, amen. Don Reed is a number of things. He's a lawyer, he's a banker, he's a triathlete. He's made that swim through shark-infested waters from Alcatraz uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the city. Uh, but the thing he's most proud of is uh, he, he is a Marine Sergeant, an 0331 machine gunner. And if you ever drive with him in his car, it's the only California license plate that says lock and load. And with that, it's my distinct honor to introduce to you Don Reed. Don, thank you. Thank you, Chris. And uh, wonderful introduction, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Judge Cobb, General Myatt, it's a pleasure and an honor to uh, have the opportunity to, to say a few words to you. And uh, I was just a small part of the uh, Korean War. I was just a small part. And, uh, but such a wonderful uh, war it was in terms of uh, accomplishment and we did a great job. I'm gonna talk about three subjects. The Korean War, and uh, my over one year in combat as a machine gunner, and the monument which we've built at the, uh, at the Presidio. On October 8, 1945, the cruiser number 38, with the uh, name USS San Francisco, put into Inchon Harbor in Korea, and soon it played a part in making the agreement, which eventually led to the 38th parallel. The partition of uh, Korea at the 38th parallel gave to the Soviet Union and North Korea a communist government, while the United States provided leadership in forming a democratic government in South Korea. Years passed. Suddenly, on June 25, 1950, in a sneak attack by 135,000 North Korean troops trained and equipped by the Soviets, they crossed the 38th parallel, launching an all-out offensive against the much smaller Republic of Korea Army, 
which was equipped only with rifles and light artillery. The South Korean army was unable to halt the heavily armored Soviet-built T-34 tanks. The next day, the Han River bridges were blown up, trapping 40,000 South Korean troops north of the, of the river. The South Korean Army Command could account for only 22,000 of the 98,000 men it carried on its rolls on June 25. It was an absolute onslaught. In late June, the United States and the newly founded United Nations rightfully became heavily committed to the defense of South Korea. The shock wave set off by this overt communist aggression stunned Washington and reverberated around the Western world. The U.S. forces were directed by President Harry Truman to take command. The Security Council of the United States met with the United Nations in emergency session on June 25 and adopted a resolution calling on North Korea to cease hostilities and withdraw its forces back to the 38th parallel. They refused. We withdrew and then almost lost the war at the Pusan perimeter. But we turned it around and won at Pusan, Inshan, and Seoul. We crossed into North Korea and then in October 1950, over 300,000 Chinese communist soldiers crossed the Yalu River. They joined forces with the then nearly decimated North Korean army. Let me talk about the Battle of the Chosen Reservoir, or Chenjin Reservoir, which really, to me, represents the war. Twelve Chinese communist divisions of about 120,000 grouped in the Taibak Mountains and attacked in November. The 1st Marine Division and the U.S. Army 7th Division occupied positions around the reservoir. The temperature was 30 degrees below zero. On November 29, two Marine regiments were cut off and surrounded at Udamni. On December 6, Marine General O.P. Smith told a British war correspondent, retreat? Hell, we're not retreating. We're just attacking in a different direction. Nine heavily defended roadblocks barred the road between Hagaru and Kotori, but Marine and Army troops swept down the road. 22 hours of agony later, they had covered the nine and a half miles, and upon arrival, there were hundreds and hundreds of wounded. On December 14, Marine and Army forces reached Hamhung and marched straight down to the docks and boarded the 28 Navy ships. They had suffered 10,500 casualties since landing at Wonsan. The evacuation at Hamnung was just remarkable. The Navy took out 105,000 troops, 17,500 vehicles, 350,000 tons of cargo, and 91,000 Korean refugees. Simply amazing. The battles continued over the next two years across all of Korea. I got to Korea in August of 1951 when the 1st Marine Division was on the last major offensive campaign. We were involved in taking the punch bowl and surrounding hills in the eastern area north of the 38th parallel. I was assigned to the weapons company, 3rd Battalion, 7th Regiment, and was given the role of ammo carrier in its heavy machine gun section. I arrived to my assigned unit at sunset and was given the watch of four to eight. And we were told we were jumping off at 0500. The outfit was very seasoned in combat time and as a result, I moved up quickly in our section. For the next three weeks, we were on the move and we took several hills. My main assignment was to uh, take out wounded Marines in the evac to the evacuating helicopters which were coming in to remove them to the rear and to bring back more ammunition. This I did over those next three weeks where we were steadily involved in moving forward and taking those hills. It was intense. One of the platoon leaders in our company was awarded the Medal of Honor. 
for his bravery. I took out dozens of wounded Marines and brought up a lot of ammunition. There was no doubt at all we were winning. I knew we were very successful and later learned that this campaign resulted in an estimated casualties of over 100,000 in the whole operation. The communist forces were not liquidated, but they were very badly crippled. This was all occurring at the same time as Bloody Nose Ridge and Heartbreak Ridge, which were taking place on our left. In 1951, the Korean War was unpopular among Americans, and I can assure you that the spirit of the Corps of the Marines was very high. Jim Michener, a noted author, after spending a couple of days among frontline Marines during January of 1952, told a group of officers at Division CP that he was really impressed with the morale of the Marines on the MLR. He said he was encouraged to find that they knew exactly what their purpose was in the Korean fighting. Under the command of, of the Chief of Staff of the 1st Marine Division, then Colonel Brute Krulak, our outfit, 3-7, was moved in helicopters for the first and largest helicopter operation to date up the combat lines. Twelve helicopter operations moved 958 combat-equipped Marines 15 miles into combat. This was called Operation Bumblebee. I was online in, on 10 November when Marine tanks and mortars and machine guns added their fire to the grand crescendo of exploding shells and bombs. The cruiser USS San Los Angeles contributed gunfire from 17 miles away. The Marine planes blasted the enemy. The communists were bombarded with thousands of leaflets inviting them to the Marine birthday dinner that evening. 20 Korean Reds actually did surrender, though some doubt exists as to whether they were responding to our invitation. When treaty negotiations progressed, the 1st Marine Division was moved to the area around Pemwomajan, and I served as, in an operation called Operation Snatch, which had as its purpose to rescue the UN negotiators with our tanks in the event that any effort was made to capture them. Over my last six months, we were involved in the bunker wars with trench warfare at outposts, including Vegas and The Hook, where many of my fellow machine gun buddies lost their lives. At no point in the Korean War did the Marine Corps give ground except under orders. The designs of Red China and the Soviet Russia were unmasked in Korea, and the people of the United States awakened to their peril, and the operations in Korea were a defeat of communism. The battles were savage, and the casualties on both sides were appallingly high. Altogether, military casualties on both sides were estimated to be 2.4 million, and civilian casualties at 2 million, bringing the total to 404 million men, women, and children who were killed or wounded over these three years. Simply, it was a bloodbath, but we really won. Look at Korea today. Let me now talk about the monument, which we've built to commemorate the Korean War. And since the beginning, the Korean War Memorial Foundation's mission has been twofold. Not only to build the war memorial, but to tell the world, and especially the youth, about its importance. In early 2013, when we met with the newly appointed Council General here in San Francisco and we asked for his support, the Council General Han helped us in raising the funds to build this beautiful monument. Of the $3.7 million which we've raised, the Korean Americans and the Republic of Korea have given us 52% of our total. They have been completely committed and extremely generous to the success of our project. We salute them and it took us over six years to raise the funds to build this memorial. On June 13, 2013, the Presidio Trust gave us this glorious site. When we were given the beautiful site at the Presidio, we were told that the gift was conditioned on the fact that a, a tree planted there must remain there permanently. 
because of a previous commitment. Of course, we agreed and, and we later learned that it had been planted by the Ohlone Indians with the permission of the Presidio 16 years before. Recently, the Ohlone Indian chief stopped by to let us know that they wished to place a plaque at the tree to recognize a 19-year-old Ohlone Indian who, as a soldier, gave his life in the early days of the Korean War. This really represents an incredible coincidence. Today, a 40-foot long, 10-foot high, tall, curved wall of polished California black granite stands on high ground in the Presidio of San Francisco on the very same latitude as the landing at Inchon. Adorned with carved battle images, the structure is part of a permanent memorial designed to honor and preserve the nation to the United Nations servicemen and women from 21 countries who fought and gave their lives to protect South Korea's freedom during the Korean War. All of this sits on a promontory that offers visitors a sweeping view of the Golden Gate Bridge and the neighboring coastline. As the memorial founders have noted, it's a very fitting vista since the San Francisco Bay was the embarkation point for so many who went off to fight in Korea and was the journey's end for so many who came home to their loved ones or to their final resting place. Be assured the Korean War is not a forgotten war. Rather, the Korean War was one of the most important events of the 20th century because for the first time, force was used to contain communism. Had North Korea succeeded in adding territory to the communist bloc of nations through a force of arms, they would have used it again and again. Communist military aggression was defeated for the very first time in Korea. Today, North Korea remains a closed totalitarian state, widely regarded as a threat to world peace, and South Korea is an economic miracle, one of the, America's largest trading partners and staunchest ally. She has become one of the world's strongest economies, for once in their long history able to set to act solely in their own national interests. They have produced an outstanding level of prosperity with the freedom to enjoy it. In deep appreciation, I would like to acknowledge three ladies without whom we could not have achieved this beautiful monument. San Francisco's Protocol Chair, Charlotte Schultz, U.S. Senator, Diane Feinstein, and past Presidio President, Nancy Bechtel. I would also like to recognize our historic landscape architect, Mr. Michael Lamb, who did an outstanding job. Thank you, Michael. Our foundation is now involved in telling to America, youth, and to the world of the war and how valuable to democracy it was. We will speak before all youth groups at the high school, college, and graduate school levels. I'd like to thank all of you for your attention and Semper Fi. Don, read out. Don, thank you for those, uh, those remarks and putting kind of the grand scheme of things in perspective and then sharing your personal uh, experiences on the battlefield as well as the aftermath uh, of the war and, uh, and where we stand now in terms of a, a very prosperous Republic of Korea. In honor of your presentation today, we have a, uh, a plaque uh, to adorn your wall and a uh, Marine Corps tie to wear next time you come here. Veterans of the Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, Merchant Marine. I tried to do that in alphabetical order. I didn't succeed. Nevertheless, uh, this is uh, an extraordinary occasion every year. And uh, I give expression to our appreciation to the Marines Memorial Club for ensuring the opportunity for us to remember 
not only our own military service, but those who are no longer living and were our comrades from 1950 until 1953. Uh, Sergeant Don Reed referred to the Korean War Memorial and the foundation of which I have the pleasure of uh, being president of the governing board. Uh, I am here as advertised in the program for a presentation and I can't do it in thin air. And the presentation partner has been a secret. And maybe it was top secret, but we are going to violate that secret by calling Michael Lamb of the Presidio Trust to join me on this uh, modest but important platform. Now, it was a secret because Michael is not wearing a tie. <laughs> if it weren't a secret, he'd have a tie as beautiful as that just conferred upon Don Reed. It is my honor to read a presentation which is in its nascent state, meaning that it will be a object made of wood. But as sometime occurs, never in the building of the memorial, Michael, uh, material doesn't arrive on time. So I will use this paper version to transmit to you what is emblematic of the feeling of all the officers, board members, and those who realize the participation and the importance of Michael Lamb to the memorial would like to acknowledge. In appreciation of Michael Lamb for dedicated service as the Presidio Historic Landscape Architect, who has been responsible for the outstanding design and completion of the Korean War Memorial at the Presidio of San Francisco. The memorial captures the phases of onslaught, withdrawal, stalemate, ultimate victory. It is a beautiful landmark which will educate future generations about the importance of the forgotten war, where the advance of communism was stopped and South Korea was saved. We salute you, Michael, for giving us this exceptional and magnificent tribute to those who served militarily in the Korean War. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judge Kopp. Um, it was a surprise. Um, I have to say that um, I am truly honored to be here in front of all of you. Um, this journey that we, we took this last three, four years or so, I'm kind of losing count. Um, it, was just, uh, it was just my honor and pleasure to get to know Colonel Stevens, Sergeant Reed, Captain Parker, Judge Kopp, Pete McCloskey, and we, we actually created the memorial. We started off with some very different ideas, and through the lengthy discussions and meetings that we had over the years, I think we created something very beautiful. And I know that the Presidio Trust is, is very excited about having this, this new facility, this new monument on the, on the Presidio. 
and we are already seeing that it's becoming a landmark. We're seeing people coming to it, and we just we just look forward to the years to come and maintaining it and keeping it the special place that it is. Thank you very much. Yeah, my name is Jae Hyun Shin. I'm a Korean consul. I'm Korean consul general here in great city of San Francisco. And very nice to meet you and very honored to be with you today at this very meaningful event. And my thanks, special thanks first goes to General Myatt and also the members of the Marines Memorial Association and also Judge Kapp and the members of the Korean War Memorial Foundation and above all, the US Korean War veterans and their families and other, other guests who are present here at this very meaningful and very important event. And I'm once again very much delighted to be a part of, to, part to join you at this very meaningful event. And before awarding and also congratulating my another good friend, Mr. Wallace Levin, who received the Medal of Ambassador for Peace, the medal is in the, uh, the issued by our Korean government in uh, rec recognition of your great uh, contributions and also services and sacrifices made during the Korean War. This is not and should not be a forgotten war. Back in Korea, you may realize that the, even a boy on the streets still have a very clear memory of what you did 66 years ago. As a result, we have today's Korea, one of the most precious alliance, ally of the United States of America, of America. So for the last 60 years, yes, as Judge Kapp uh, clearly mentioned, Korea has uh, come a long way. Korea has developed a lot. It is now one of the most vibrant democracies in the world and it is one of the 10th, 11th largest economies in the world. What are the examples do we need to prove that what you did 66 years ago? And now Korea, together with the United States, are, is trying to do its best to do the same thing that you did 66 years ago, to help those who are in diet need around the world to protect them and to give them liberty and freedom and also to promote the prosperity of the entire world. Sorry to say this, but all against our efforts to maintain peace and uh, promote peace in Korea and in Northeast Asia and Asia Pacific region, Still, we have a formidable foe, enemy in North Korea, who has been making a lot of troubles and recently uh, the, uh, took a fifth nuclear test and by doing so, the threaten, uh, threaten the peace and security of the world. But here again, United States and Korea, uh, and Korea are the core of all our efforts to deter the recurrence of another war in Korea and to deter North Korea from going ahead to develop nuclear weapons. Yes. So, oh, thank you very much. Thank you. So turning back to your noble services and then great sacrifices and dedication, I think that you are the living testament to great American leadership, which has been instrumental to protecting the f and promoting the freedom and democracy of the entire world. And second, you are the living testament to the great history of the Korea-US alliance. That alliance was first founded and forged in your great service 
and the blood of yourself and your colleagues 66 years ago. This is the very reason why many Koreans still clearly remember what you did to us after the Second World War and during the Korean War. With uh, uh, deep and profound respect, as a token of our great admiration and appreciation, I'd like to solemnly present the Ambassador for Medal Award to 49 U.S. Korean War veterans represented by Colonel Wallace Levin. Thank you very much, everybody. I thank you uh, for this honor, but uh, I know for a fact that the vast majority of you in the audience far more deserve this medal than I do. And I would like all Korean War veterans to please stand. Please stand, all the Korean War veterans. I proudly accept this, this award for all of you who deserve it far more than me, and I especially salute those of you that had to face the enemy eyeball to eyeball. You are the true heroes, and uh, that's my opinion, and thank you very much to the Korean Council. When you bring a group of veterans like this from the Korean War uh, together, from uh, those who are Korean, uh, who are from that country, Americans who went to Korea to fight, and you bring their families uh, and their friends together, and you commemorate and educate and serve in this building, it's what we do for all eras of war veterans. So I thank you for coming, and I thank you for supporting the Marines Memorial Association. I like to tell people, many of you remember when we had 16 major military bases in San Francisco. It was a military town. We saw people in uniforms walking around, uh, even in the early 90s when I was stationed here. And now there are no major Department of Defense U.S. military installations. This is it. This is what I call a combat outpost. And uh, sometimes it's in friendly territory and sometimes maybe less friendly. But I depart friendly lines and I reenter friendly lines uh, very proudly alongside you. So thank you. I want to thank a few people quickly. First, the staff at the Marines Memorial Club. When you can put 220 meals on a table the way they did, I think they did a super job. Uh, second, I'd like to thank the recruiting station, uh, San Francisco Marines, who posted our colors and who are about to, uh, to, to uh, uh, retire the colors as well. Thank you. Luncheons like this don't make themselves. I just need to uh, recognize a few people quickly. We had a, a luncheon committee that included uh, Frank Mendez, Don Reed, Denny Weissgerber, John Stevens, Eleanor Zapanta, Wendy Schumann, and Clay Caitlin McClellan, thank you for your work on this luncheon. And most of our uh, honored guests we've mentioned, but uh, General Myatt, our president and CEO here at the Marines Memorial Club, sir, thank you. And from our uh, Korean War Memorial Foundation Board, we have Admiral Tom Brown, who is my battle buddy at my table, Jerry Parker, uh, and also uh, uh, Manjay Kim, the Vice President. So thank you. I'd also like to recognize uh, Colonel Ed Brandel, U.S. Marine Corps retired, and also Colonel Tom Jenkins, U.S. Army retired. And lastly, we have David Johnson here from the Korean War uh, Veterans Association and also uh, Ed Phipps, Marine Corps veteran and retired San Francisco fire chief. That's a big job. Uh, thank you all for being here. And with that, I will ask you to rise as we uh, retire the colors. Right, face.